In this video, we're going to take a look at the first FRQ question from the 20 or the 2008 AP Chemistry test. And here we've got a synthesis reaction. Uh, it says solid carbon and carbon dioxide gas at 1,160 Kelvin were placed in a rigid two liter container and the reaction uh, represented above that they give us occurred. As the reaction proceeded, the total pressure in the container was monitored. When equilibrium was reached, there was still some solid copper, or not copper, but sol solid carbon remaining in the container. Results are recorded in the table given. Write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction. Okay, so I'm gonna do that up here and then I'll move it down. Um, what a lot of people will do is they'll say, oh, K is equal to, CO squared over CO2 uh, times C. And there's a couple things wrong with this. One, carbon's a solid, so we wouldn't want to include it. And also, they asked us for Kp. So we know that when we use Kp, we need to use uh, partial pressures. So what we would say is Kp equals the pressure of carbon monoxide squared divided by the pressure of CO2. Okay, and I'm going to move that down for part A. Okay, now in B, it says calculate the number of moles of CO initially placed in the container. Assume that the volume of solid carbon is negligible. So what I'm gonna do is, because they say initially, that would be at time zero hours. So for part B, I'm gonna use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, where uh, we're gonna use the pressure of CO2 and that will give us the moles of CO2 because we've learned that pressure and moles are directly related. So the pressure that we have is five ATMs the volume, I believe it was a rigid two liter container. We're gonna solve for moles. R is 0 0.0821 ATMs times liters divided by moles times Kelvin. And then the temperature, kind of a crazy temperature here, but 1,160 Kelvin. Okay, and I'm gonna divide over 0.0821. And I'm gonna divide over 1,160, and my N, or my moles of CO2 when I do that, again, we never expect a lot of moles, but um, 0.105 moles of CO2 is what I get. So again, I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna move it down on my lines. I'll, maybe I'll put it down there. Okay, so we've done part B. In part C, we've got two uh, parts, part one and part two, so I anticipate them to be related to each other. For the reaction mixture at equilibrium at 1,160 Kelvin, the partial pressure of CO2 is found to be 1.63 atms. Calculate the partial pressure of CO. Okay, so what I notice is that we must have reached equilibrium because there is uh, no observable change. And we know that when we reach equilibrium, the reaction doesn't actually stop, but the forward and the reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate, so there is no observable change. So the total pressure is 8.37 atmospheres. So what I'm gonna do in C part one is I'm gonna use Dalton's laws of partial pressure, which sound fancy, but all it says is that the total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of CO2 and the pressure of just carbon monoxide. The total pressure from the table is 8.37 atms. Uh, the pressure they gave us was for CO2, so that's 1.63 atms. And so I can solve for the pressure of carbon monoxide. I'll subtract 1.63. And the pressure of carbon monoxide that I get is going to be 6.74 atms. And that's specifically the pressure of carbon monoxide at equilibrium. Okay, now part two says... What is the value of the equilibrium constant Kp? So I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna copy it and we're gonna plug in what we can to here to see if we can get Kp. Okay, so carbon monoxide was 6.74 atms. 
make sure you square that. And then carbon dioxide here was 1.63 ATMs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug that into my calculator. I expect to get a K greater than one because our products are much larger than our reactants. And I do, I get 27.9 uh, for my KP. And as a gentle reminder, uh, equilibrium constants do not have units. Okay, so in part D, they say if a suitable solid catalyst replaced in the reaction vessel, would we find the total pressure of the gases at equilibrium to be greater than, less than, or equal to the final total pressure of the gases at equilibrium without the catalyst? Justify your answer. So first things first, we need to make sure we actually pick one of these. We don't want to try to somehow pick more than one. We just need to pick one and stick with it. And what I know about the equilibrium constant is that the only thing that changes um, the equilibrium constant is temperature. So catalyst is not impacting the temperature. The catalyst is something that gets you to equilibrium quicker, but it doesn't change any of your equilibrium values. So I would say that the addition of a catalyst only speeds up a reaction and has no impact on the position of the equilibrium or the equilibrium constant. Okay, now last question. It says, in another experiment involving the same reaction, a rigid two liter container initially contains 10 grams of carbon plus CO and CO2 each at a partial pressure of two atmospheres at 1,160 Kelvin. Predict whether the partial pressure of CO2 will increase, decrease, or remain the same. So again, we're gonna need to pick one of those as this system approaches equilibrium. Justify your prediction with a calculation. So to me, although they word it kind of strange, this is a shifting question. They're basically saying, are we gonna shift towards CO2? Are we gonna shift left is what they're asking. So um, what we'll do is I'm gonna take a picture of this, move it down here so we can use it. Um, they say that our, we have 10 grams of carbon and then two atmospheres of CO and CO2. So if we're talking about shifting, we need to do Q versus K, okay? Anytime you're doing Le Chatelier's principle, the best justification you can have is talking about Q versus K. So um, to get Q, this is specifically QP, I'm gonna do copy. Case, and I'm going to get rid of K and I'm just going to switch it to Q. Notice that we're going to have two atmospheres as our numerator and two atmospheres as our denominator. And notice, even though they gave us 10 grams of carbon, it's a solid, so it's not going to be included. And so when I solve for this, I'm going to get uh, two as my Q. I'm going to draw a number line. We know K from above is 27.9. So Q is over here at two. And so it looks like I'm gonna shift uh, right. So the reaction shifts right because QP is less than KP. And so thus the reaction will consume CO2 because CO2 uh, is a reactant and we're going to the right. Um, decreasing the partial pressure of the CO2 gas.